Greetings, friends around the world. Will you go to heaven? Will you go to heaven? Is this the reward of the saved? Is heaven the place where the saved will go? Heaven. This one short word summarizes the blessed goal of all Christians. It gives the very meaning of the purpose of life and the essence of the hope of life after death. Or does it? Millions of professing Christians think so. But are they correct? Is heaven what they think it is? Namely, the prayed for and worked toward reward of the saved. Well, you need to know the truth. And even if you already know the truth, you need to be able to prove it. No doctrinal question strikes closer to the heart of traditional Christian belief than the truth of the biblical teaching on the doctrine of heaven. Quite surprisingly, the biblical teaching about heaven can be easily summarized in a brief sentence or two. In short, heaven is the celestial place of God's throne, his headquarters of government of all things seen and unseen. It is decidedly not the promised reward of saved Christians, however. The usual teachings of this world, as you can well imagine, certainly go totally opposite to the Bible. No doubt that last sentence, the one saying that heaven is not the promised reward of the saved, would shock most professing Christians. Most have been taught and have blindly accepted without proof that heaven is indeed the goal and hope of life itself. While most persons, even though not having seen heaven, carry with themselves a mental image of it, Usually this image is of a sort of spiritual paradise replete with adorning clouds populated by angels with wings, hollows, and long flowing golden hair. Also to be found there are the souls, so-called souls of the faithful, clustered together in holy groups, playing on harps or beholding the face of the Lord in trance-like fixation millennia after millennia. Yes, this is probably most people's belief about heaven and what it is for and what it is like. But it is not. It is not the picture the Bible gives us. The Bible gives us the following. It is best to first show what heaven is and then what it is not. Many are surprised to find that the Bible speaks of not just one, but three heavens. The first heaven is our earthly atmosphere, the blanket of life-sustaining gases that encircles our globe, the heaven where the birds fly, Genesis 1, 20, and from where the, the dew falls, Deuteronomy 33, verse 28. The second heaven represents the expanse of this great universe, the outer space where we find the sun, moon, stars, comets, and planets. It is of this heaven that God spoke with when he said that the sun, moon, and stars were to be for light. He spoke of that in Genesis 1, verses 15 through 17. Now the final heaven, the third heaven, also mentioned Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. So the final heaven, the third heaven, is indeed the location of God's holy throne and the seat of the ruling authority of all physical and spiritual reality. And it certainly does have some of the qualities traditional Christianity assigns to it. Now, for example, this third heaven is a type of spiritual paradise. The, the Apostle Paul said as much in Second Corinthians 12 verse 4, where he briefly described the place and called it paradise. Now further, it is plainly the seat of God's throne and of his power, for we are taught by Jesus not to swear by heaven because it is God's throne, Matthew 5 verse 34. Now God further draws back the curtain and reveals more about his throne in Revelation 4, where in a few sweeping vessel verses, that, that is, the Apostle John tantalizes us with panoramic glimpses of the celestial pageantry and power of the heavenly throne room. Isn't that amazing, friends? Yes, indeed it is. And of the specific layout and furnishing of the place we call, uh, the place we know but little, However, in addition to the items listed in Revelation 4, listed by John, we are told that the lampstand, tables, showbread, and other artifacts of the earthly tabernacle were merely physical counterparts of heavenly things. That's said in Hebrews 9, verse 1 through 5 and verse 23. Although an exact explanation of what this means is not given. But we need not guess about whether heaven is the reward of the saved. We are directly told in no certain ambiguous terms... And the answer will shock many. Jesus plainly taught, No one has ascended to heaven, 
but he who came down from heaven, that is he that is the Son of Man, Jesus himself, that said in John 3 verse 13. Astoundingly, this, that scripture means just what it says. No man, no Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob, no one has gone to heaven. There are no souls of the saved in heaven. It cannot therefore be the reward of the saved. Now people do not like to believe this plain statement of Jesus. Yet even King David said to be a man after God's own heart. Acts 2, 13 verse 22. And one who found favor from, with God. Acts 7 verse 46. So even David was not in heaven even after Jesus' death. As the Apostle Peter said, Men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David, for he is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. That's in Acts chapter 2 verse 9. Peter then added, For David did not ascend into, he did not ascend into the heaven. That's in verse 34. We have now seen that heaven is God's throne, and we have seen that it most assuredly is not the abode of the deceased souls of the righteous. But then, what is the true hope and goal of the true Christian? Well, put briefly, the hope and goal of a Christian is not to enter heaven and play a harp for eternity, but to be born into the family of God, as a member of the God family, and hence become a literal God and ruling God's government with, and, God, and kingdom with eternal life from on the earth. You can see for the reference Revelation 5.10, Daniel 2.44, Daniel 7.27, and Matthew chapter 5 and verse 5. Even the plain scriptures cited, I've just cited them, even the, those plain scriptures showing that the heaven is not the abode of the righteous dead, nor the promised reward of the saved, even though they are scarcely even sufficient to answer the objections of those who believe that Jesus promised heaven to the good who die. Rather, they point to numerous scriptures that, in their midst, at minds at least, seem to say we do not go to heaven at death. For example, some will point to John 14, verse 1 through 14, which quotes Jesus telling the disciples in that in his father's house there are many mansions, that he was going to prepare for them and say, this passage proves we go to heaven. But, you know, these verses say no such thing. For the Father's house is not heaven, but a temple of God in John 2 verse 16, which had many chambers and mansions, each for the use of a specific job or function. The disciples correctly understood Jesus to be saying that in his kingdom were many responsible positions and that he was going to prepare for a job for them and that he would bring it with him uh, when he comes back. He mentions this to the disciples in John 14 verse 3, in Revelation 22 verse 12, and, uh, you know, he was going to prepare a job for them, and that he would bring it with him when he comes again to set up his kingdom on this earth. Now others turn to Philippians chapter 1 verse 23 and 24, and they quote Paul's statement that he desired to depart and be with Christ as a proof text for going to heaven at death. But God, you know, God has different views. Paul does not in this verse say where he will meet Jesus Christ, nor, 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 nor where, nor when. Paul does in other verses clearly show that he and the rest of the righteous will meet Jesus at the time of the resurrection, and on earth in its clouds at his second coming. First Thessalonians chapter four verse sixteen and seventeen. So it'll be his second coming, not to the not to in heaven, it'll be he'll be coming to the earth. And consider this if the saved souls of millions are now in heaven, why must there be a resurrection of the dead in the first place? Like we have a, a thorough explanation in first Corinthians fifteen. Obviously because the dead are just that. The dead and in their, gra and in their gra graves, they're not in heaven. They will never be in heaven. Likewise, the often quoted scripture says, Great is your reward in heaven, Matthew 5 verse 12. But it's misunderstood by many. Other often verse 5 of that chapter is not read, 
where Jesus says the righteous will inherit the earth. Nor is the section uh, compared with First Peter chapter one verse three and four, which says a Christian reward is reserved in heaven. And Revelation twenty two twenty, which shows later the although the reward is reserved in heaven, Jesus will bring it with him and give it to to us when he returns to the earth. Now, we don't have enough time to explain in detail other misunderstood passages of scripture, such as those concerning the true faith of Enoch and Elijah, whom they, whom many falsely suppose went to heaven based upon misunderstood verse, or the story of the thief, of the thief on the cross. Well, also Lazarus and the rich man, and Paul's vision of heaven in Second Corinthians chapter twelve, verse one through six. In any case, we have other materials that explain this matter. But aside from a knowledge of the often misunderstood verses we have just mentioned, the whole subject of heaven can be grasped by remembering relatively few scriptures. The main ones are Matthew five thirty four, which says heaven is God's throne. Revelation 4, which describes that throne. John 3, 6, uh, 13, which states that no man has ascended to heaven. Acts 2, verse 29 through 35, states that, uh, that even, uh, 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 you know, even after Jesus Christ's ascension, David the righteous had not gone to heaven. Also, to help, it is helpful to remember a few verses showing that God's kingdom will be on earth, like in Matthew 5, 5, Daniel 2, 44, Daniel 7, 27, and Revelation chapter 5, verse 10. In conclusion, dear friends, yes, the biblical truth about heaven is easily summarized. Heaven is God's throne and current seat of the government, but it is not the promised reward of the saved. How wonderful is our God to reveal through his true church the blessed truth about this important subject in this very end age. Well, thank you for your attention. Until next time, goodbye, friends.